I've said it before on this channel and people didn't believe it, but manufacturing is coming back to North America. Companies are running away from China and huge, huge supply chains that take eight weeks or three months or so on to put together simple products. And they are finding that moving to America is beneficial. There's some tax breaks, there's some push from the government to do it, but really this is the largest industrialization of North America in human history. And we're seeing it right before our eyes. I have a great example from the Wall Street Journal. Yesterday they had an article about Bath and Body Works who took their manufacturing from China and brought it to Ohio. And they reduced their entire supply chain time from three months to 21 days and just a couple miles. So before they had, they had container ships moving cargo and things all around the world to try and make soap and the bottles and the caps and all of this stuff. And now it all happens right in Ohio within a couple miles of each other. That's a huge win. They're not the only company that's done this, but it's a great example of how manufacturing is coming back to the United States, Mexico, and Canada. And you can get in on this boom through investment and, and through, you know, moving towards that, that manufacturing, but it's a very specific manufacturing. It's automated and it is, it is as lean as possible. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the skills that you need to participate in that. But it is happening. So with Bath and Body Works there, you know, they make beauty and, and, you know, bath, things, right? They make soaps and nice things to, to pamper yourself. And they were making all of this stuff in China, right? So China at the beginning of the uh, millennium at, uh, in 2000, they had a pretty low labor cost and they, they invested a lot of money and resources on making these groups of, of these areas in China where there's a group of suppliers that could supply everything needed for a particular sector. So for instance, the automotive sector, they, they have the suppliers of the spark plugs next to the suppliers of the uh, engine blocks next to the suppliers of the, the wire harness and so on. And they can, they can all do this within a particular area. And then that's one of the reasons why they have such a strong manufacturing moat, right? Or why that even though the, the Chinese price per labor has increased 15 fold and, the, and their efficiency and productivity has only doubled in the past 20 years, because they have these manufacturing hubs, it's actually a big boon for them. However, with the pandemic, with the supply chain issues and so on, and with the decoupling, we are decoupling from China, mark my words, with this going on, company after company after company is moving their manufacturing back to America. So with Bath and Body Works, they have the, the bottle manufacturers with the soap manufacturers with the bottle cap manufacturers all within a little space in Ohio. And they had to convince their suppliers to move there and so on. And it took them like two to three years to plan this out and execute it. But now they're there and they're seeing great benefits. A shorter supply chain is, is wonderful for a company. They don't have to have all of that product on the water. That's a huge reduction in working capital and so on. Plus the, you know, if there's a supply chain disruption, they have, they, they have to adjust to that in a big way. Plus they got to plan things way in advance to get a three month lead time on whatever product that they are going to sell in three months. So it's very difficult. Having that down to 21 days is huge. They can adjust their production as needed to market demand. So they seem very happy with the change. Companies, I'm telling you, company after company after company is doing this now. They've been doing this for the past five to 10 years and it's only going to accelerate. So the, the journal estimates that in the next 10 years, there's gonna be 3.5 trillion 
trillion dollars of investment going into onshoring and nearshoring and friendshoring all of our manufacturing as much as possible. We are decoupling from China. There's no doubt about it. China is in a huge problem right now because their entire their entire economic model is about making stuff for us and then selling it to us. And we are moving away from that. Europe as well, but North America is the big beneficiary of manufacturing because we have the automation and the technical knowledge in America, in the United States, to build the chips and the tooling and the, and the automation to make these automated factories. In Mexico, we have skilled but low-cost labor that can handle things when we need eyes and fingers on uh, assembly and so on. Uh, Canada has all kinds of natural resources that, uh, that you know, we can use. And this NAFTA and the NAFTA II agreement that was negotiated recently is a huge huge trading block, biggest in the world. So, so watch this space, manufacturing returning to North America. Will it get low skilled jobs back into manufacturing in the United States? Probably not, I'm afraid. So if you're hoping that you can exit high school and then go work for a factory, probably not. But, but, there will be skilled labor jobs that have to be done there. So modern factories are mostly robotics and, and some operators. So, so one way to participate that here is to get trained as a high-tech operator in an automated factory. Won't be as many jobs as before, and we have to figure out what to do with all of AI and automation taking all of these jobs. But again, it's a conversation for another time. Right now, this is great evidence that manufacturing is back, baby, back to North America, and I'm excited to see it. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please add a like and consider subscribing. And I hope you're having a great day. Super happy you're here. And take care. See you next time.